Hello everyone, and welcome to uh, a game called Obscuria. This is only chapter one, uh, and the music is already drawing me into the storyline. Uh, this is an 18 plus game, so if you are under the age of 18, don't watch. But of course, I can't force you to do anything, so let's go ahead and stop the game. Uh, no one goes into the mountain without a reason. purpose of business. Buying. No one takes their past into the mountain. How are you going to pay? Some funds. Some work. Good luck with that. Everyone knows what it means when you go. No one says anything about it. Give me your bags. The guard looks through my things with perfect efficiency. Bored, they start asking me questions. What are you going to be called down there? Oh, alright. I'll do they them. I will be they them Mew. Good choice. You have a mask. Mix Mew. No one would sell me one. No. Not the problem here. If you're buying or selling, the guard gate waves to the mask hanging around the entrance. Perhaps once worn by other visitors. The masks are old custom. Plausible deniability. We're all faceless strangers under the mountain. Pick your poison. No. Alright. I can't really see them. A charcoal colored one with unlaced and gold trim. The cream colored one with flowery details. Alright. Obviously, we're gonna have to go with the black one with the gold trim. Sounds very fast. Fancy. I take the mask off the wall and fit it to my face. It weighs on my head, but my mind feels lighter. I see my reflection in the mirror. The people under the mountain have beautiful taste. I hand the eight guard the money owed. Welcome to the marketplace. They step aside, allowing me a passage into the tunnel in the side of the mountain. I begin my descent. I wonder where we're going. At first, I have to wonder if I've been tricked in some way. The passage grows narrow, the air stale, the path uneven. I am walking by the last feeble threads of light that reach this deep. So sort of like some underground place in the middle of a mountain. But then I see something, a shimmering pale blue glow from around the corner. I fight through the narrowing walls until I am able to turn the corner. The passage suddenly widens, then it opens. I step from the passage into a cavern so massive I can hardly see the end of it. The marketplace. There are several masked people who were seated or leaning against the walls around this little entryway, and now they are approaching me. Welcome, newcomer. A fresh face. Well, it's not really my face, it's a mask, but... Yeah. Same difference. Someone new could use a guide, couldn't they? Hucksters, or perhaps petty thieves looking for an easy mark. My valuables are kept under my heavy robe, safe from pickpockets. I still myself and march forward past the strangers. There is no logic to this place. A fishmonger selling dried and salted fish sits next to a bookseller with stacks of forbidden tomes. A fungus man and a bird keeper are bickering. I wish I had visuals. If they weren't obvious scams, I could have taken one of the offers for a guide and saved myself some time. At first, I glance at each stall in turn. Out here, nearest the entryway tunnel. All of the stalls are selling simple amenities or cheap thrills. The sorts of things a departing traveler might want to have when they are a ascent, not what I'm looking for. It's not here. Well, I suppose it wouldn't be. Asking one of the sellers, I get directions. The rough walls of the cavern shifting and trembling in unsteady eddy candle, a glowworm light so slowly turned smooth where natural walls turned into turned to human carved. The ramshackle stalls turn to ramshackle buildings. 
to painted and varnished walls. The quality of goods on sale is improving as well. The cheap basics are behind. Ahead are the rare and luxurious and illicit. The real reason anyone comes here. Seeing the sign for... Oh my god. Apothecary. Apothecary? Apothecary. I don't know that one. An easily recognizable serpent coiling around the staff. I slip inside. Welcome. The shopkeeper is masked, of course, but that is not what grabs my attention. The din of hundreds of voices selling and buying and negotiating in the echoing caves is muffled, but not by much. That is because, while the ap apothecary has four walls, apothecary, there is no roof over the store. I can't- I'm not sure if I'm saying that right. Newcomer, huh? What? You m must be a fresh arrival. And why would you say that? You're staring where the ceiling should be. Uh, very observant of you, but that means nothing. Uh, I always look at the sky. Uh. I suppose in a city with no sun or rain, roofs are unnecessary. Uh. Oh, very true. There is no sky underground. But still, I'm sure there's something up there to look at. Only thing a roof keeps out in the marketplace is thieves. Uh, a common weather pattern here. Far too common. I make an e effort to examine the Apocryphy's mask. It's plain, plainer than even mine. Perhaps he is frugal, or perhaps he is poor by the standards of the marketplace. Well, you weren't driven in here by the weather. What do you need? I'm looking for Lunar Echo. I resist the urge to explain my circumstances to the shopkeeper. No, please do explain. I would like to know. No matter how meaningless or petty they seem, my secrets are one of the few resources I have in these depths. You have expense taste or terrible luck. Uh, what? I don't have a lu what I don't have is lunar echo. Echo. Is that something you can remedy? Apothecary. No. If money is a concern, I can make arrangements. It's not the money. I can never afford to stock that damnable echo. Hmm? Even if I could, I doubt I would be able to stomach it. The rumors were true, then. That is unfortunate. Where does one go, then, to find that damnable ichor? Smugglers' dens, the vaults of lords of the market, or perhaps you could take a knife to the lunar god. Failing that, the auction house may provide. It's the largest house this side of the ruby walls. It even has a roof. Oh, how fancy. <laughs> The apothecary cannot see my smile, but I hope he can hear it. I thank you for your timely advice, sir. S Abe your thanks for the lunar god. Um, it'll be a miracle if you get that echo. Mm. I take my leave of the shop. The noise rises again from loud to deafening. There are tunnels and additional caverns in all directions, but I continue the way I was going. If the walls were getting smoother and the buildings more beautiful than I am approaching the richest part of the market, it stands to reason that is where the auction house will be. Keeping my eyes up, it takes no time to find the auction house. It is as the apocryphy said, the largest house this side of the ruby walls. There are long chains of glowworms draped over the promised ridge roof that dangled and sway as the air shifts in the cavern. The building itself is deep of garnet red with gilded trim. Message received. You're very wealthy, whoever built this. The doors, covered in tiny engravings impossible to interpret and the dim lights are wide open. Bright golden lamplight pours out into the streets. Again, I wish I had a visual. People are freely milling in and out, and so I slip inside and... I am undressed for the occasion. What? What? <laughs> but neither of the guards standing at the door move or stop me. Underdressed. It's underdressed. Oh, alright. 
The sound of the outside suddenly dims and I have to blink against the sudden brightness. I can hear my own muffled footsteps as I cross the plush carpet deeper into the auction house. The whispered conversations through masks make a thin fog of sound compared to the din outside. The signs are in a language I do not recognize, but I can make some educated guess. The ordinate double doors, standing locked and guarded, must lead to the actual auction hall. There is a short, uncarpeted hall with gleaming polished floors lined with several doors. After a second, I see a giggling pair exit one of the rooms and straighten their clothes. That explains that, then. There is one door that is a little more than a window on hinges left open. I peer inside for a few seconds, only to see an ordinary office. Come in. The stranger sitting behind the desk waves to me, so I step inside. Pardon me, I did not mean to intrude. You can intrude on the bookkeeper. I must always be available. You must be? How else could anyone check to ensure I'm not meddling in the books? Does it really come to that? Well, I have no such concerns. A buyer, are you? Couldn't I simply be a browser? Haha. <laughs> you really believe someone would come into the marketplace, to the auction house, just looking to see what they can find? I suppose someone must have an all of history. Well, if that's the scale you're measured by, you, however, are not here to browse. No, I'm not. You're right. I'm here to buy. Shall I show you the catalog for the next option? I would appreciate it. The bookkeeper stands and hands me a sizable booklet. Do not damage it. Do not leave here with it. They open a drawer to their desk and hold up a knife. It's a little thing, but I have no doubt they could kill me with it. Then they sit again and resume their work. I flip for the book. There are objects of unimaginable value, works of art by artists even I know by name, an exquisite jeweled tiara fit for any princess, the deed to a, count a country manor on the surface. <laughs> then, there are the wonders I could have never dreamt of. The bird wreathed in flames that never burns. The still beating bloodstone heart of some rock nymph, a potion of clear vision. I flip a page and am met with a miserable exposed face of a young adult. Their posture is low and defeated, but they are beautiful. The text informs me that whatever is paid in auction will be sent to their family within the mountain. Surely not. I flip the page again. There are no other people in the catalog, but one is enough to turn my stomach. Thank you, bookkeeper. Finished already? What I was in what I want isn't in there. And what is it that you want? I'll check the history and see when it was last sold. I bite my tongue for a moment. Luna Eka. An unlucky one, aren't we? I couldn't say. If, if you would, bookkeeper. They shuffle through a notebook. I try to read the text, but it is nearly impossible to interpret their faint pencil sketchings. More bad luck to heap on your pile, I'm afraid. The last sale was three months back. It's unlikely we have another sale for months yet. Unless someone new comes by with a stock. It couldn't be easy, could it? And what was that final price for it? For a lot of twelve, the number they tell me is stomach dropping. I could not gather those funds in a lifetime. Even divided twelve ways, the price for a single vial is well beyond my means. My life savings weigh heavily in the coin purse under my robe, dead weight it seems. By your silence, I guess you don't have the money. Thank you for your time. I try to keep my voice neutral. But anger frail, full held under, I think. Or perhaps d disappointment. When I leave the auction house, I momentarily lose my sight and hearing as I adjust to the dim, echoing cavern. Uh, cavern. 
I didn't know this the direction my feet are taking me. My hopes for a quick visit to the marketplace had been thoroughly dashed. Now I have to determine what to do. I think I'll better give some rest. I can't afford to give up. All these have options, oh boy. I feel like if I rest in a place like this, I might... Decease. Or get everything stolen from me, but I'll take that path right now. At the moment, I don't trust myself to make a sensible choice. Staying on guard here in the mountain place is exhausting. My feet ache from climbing the mountain. I need some kind of rest before I have the energy to, de to determine what to do next. I stop by a stall and ask for directions in this decent end. Rest stop, public house, anything. Following the directions for a short tunnel, I wander through a quieter district of the marketplace. The quietest relevant. The guest house is a challenge to find, though I hesitate to call the ground down walking paths roads. There are rest houses lining them on either side. The leaping bear. The guest house recommended to me is nothing remarkable. The building has a roof. But the building itself is mostly made of raw wood. The brass doorknob is smooth under my hand, polished by thousands of guests who come and go. Inside the atmosphere is boisterous, but on the scale of a handful of people singing a drinking song, the chaos outside is already muffled and distant. Welcome. The woman who approaches has her face fully covered in a bear mask. But her neckline is untied and exposed. I wonder who she looks for. The establishment, I suppose. Hello. I was told this is a good establishment to stay the night. You were told right. Except the part about night. There is no real difference between night and day. Plenty of folks are up all hours of the day. As you do. Just sleeping when they're tired and forgetting the sun ever existed. I see. The bear-masked woman had me sign into a guest book and pay for the night. You have the room for 24 hours. If you're staying longer, I expect you here to pay for more time. But it runs out, so, or else all of your things will be sent to a moon shrine. I'll remember, thank you. Well, how are you going to keep track of time if there's no day or night? I, I need to know that. And you'll be needing these. So, that she hands me a dual metal medallion on a leather string and a key. Yeah. Dear Rufus, over there. She gestures to a mountain of a man, also in a bear mask, standing by the door. Make sure only guests go to their rooms. That medallion proves you're a guest. Don't lose it. Or else I'll find my things at a moon shrine. Pick things up quickly, you do. Seems uh, like an important skill to have here. Quite right. Indeed. She gets back to her business and says, Oh, I approach the mountain of the man, guarding the door to the room. So, hello, Rufus. I hold up the medallion and wait. I'm not about to rush a man with a bat, especially one as bloodstained as he is. Then he nods, and I'm granted passage. He walks me to the assigned room. I suppose it's a good measure to prevent theft, but so is the bloodstained bat. Hmm? Sleep doesn't come easily at first. How can I risk sleeping in the marketplace? But it does come for me, eventually. In the morning, or what my body decided was morning, my resolve had hardened. Leaving the marketplace without Lunar Acre would render everything I've done pointless. I wouldn't be able to live with myself if I stopped trying. I'm about to order something, like breakfast, from the Leaping Bear's kitchen, and then sit it deep in thought, staring into a bowl of porridge. Eating in the ma this mask is a bit of a bother. I have to navigate the spoon around the mask. There's class, you know. I start at a start, stare, stare at the sudden appearance of the pro, pro priestess. What? 
fill along the side of the mast. Then there should be pins or clasps holding the bottom part. I do as she says and find little clasps holding two parts of my mast together. Well, I feel like a proper fool. And it already feels strange having my mouth exposed. Like a, uh, like a funny kind of nudity. Newcomers are all a bit foolish. That's part of their charm. Thank you. I think. <laughs> Just keep your wits about. You'll live. You make it sound so dire. Well, you're here, aren't you? <laughs> you're not wrong. No one comes here without a good reason, I should think. What's yours? A person, no matter. Buying or selling. That's all there is down here, after all. Buying. Something I might not be able to afford, it turns out. That n that won't narrow things down too much for her. Well, it depends on how you try to buy things, doesn't it? Money will get you anywhere if you have enough of it. And there are other roads out there. Is that something you know a lot about? Hmm? I couldn't say. I only know what stories the guests bring things in. She says it flippantly enough that there must be a story there, but I resist the urge to dig. Then I suppose my next job is to find the p what paths I can use. So, thank you. Oh, not a problem. The mass trouble everyone at first. So. She sweeps away to handle another matter, and I'm left with far more productive thoughts. Money won't get me the lunar ichor. Ichor. But something else might. Influence. Friendship. Violence. Guile. My body, if it comes down to et, it, anything. There's a lot to think about. So, am I going to stay in a guest house for weeks or months? So, what possible ways are there to get Luna? If, mm? Let's start with one foot in front of the other. Over the next several days, I get to learn the layout of the marketplace. It's an ever-shifting rat's nest of stalls and passages and unmanaged pathways, but there are some fixed landmarks. I can navigate somewhat comfortably by those landmarks when they are visible. One evening, based on my own internal clock, the pro, pro priestess of the Leaping Bear hints over a mill, that as long as I am well behaved, she will be willing to extend more generous long-term rates to me. Well behaved. I wasn't planning to misbehave, but less so with Rufus keeping an eye on me. And that settled the matter for lodging in the in the moment. As for the lunar ichor, I am at a loss. It is rare, absolutely rare, and based on the reactions of those I speak to about it, some aspect of it is very taboo, well, likely the conditions it treats. I'm wandering one of the quieter passages, clearly natural by how uneven the ground is. It's mostly homes built on whatever smooth patch of stone the builder could find. But there is one that towers over the rest, a tall church with heavy oaken doors. Where normally I would expect to see a golden ten-point solar signal. Instead, there is a more simplistic crescent-shaped one. The lunar signal. Ah, uh, I suppose the solar god isn't much help down here. I have seen the eerie blue-green light of glowworms and the smoky gold lanterns, but I have not seen the sun since I started my descent. Churches dedicated to the lunar god existed outside the mountain but not in any significant numbers. The Lunar God, Lunar Ichor. It can't hurt to ask, could it? Absolutely not. I am not sure. I believe the Lunar God must believe for there to be a Lunar Ichor. Um, but there is no harm in asking. Hey, stop! I halt in my path instinctively, although after a moment I can see no one is speaking to me. Instead, there is a Racious crowd gathering just down the tunnel, shouting and tussling. A few people in utilitarian masks and what looks like uniforms are trying to push their way through. Looks like trouble. Oh. 
I am a bit of a drama queen, I like to see. Idle curiosity keeps me where I am, watching the ruckus of the crowd intensify. Very suddenly, one of the members of the crowd breaks away and sprints directly towards me. I start moving backwards, trying to step aside. I misjudge my step and stumble. I fling a hand out in attempts to find my balance. The sprinter slows down very, very slightly as they get closer to me, slow enough to catch my hand and jerk me forward. I try and pull my hand away, but this is impossible. The runner pulls me along, and I have to use all of my focus to keep up. Stop! Thief! Thief? I cannot help my astonished outburst. What? Like you're surprised? We pelt down the tunnel. Many of the people step aside for us, hardly surprised by a pair sprinting away from the collection of uniformed officials. So this guy just pulled me into his life? I wouldn't want to be involved either. The runner takes a sharp turn, nearly wrenching my arm from its socket. I yelp as I follow along. And we take a turn into some sort of business establishment. The runner does not slow down for a second as the shopkeeper opens their back door for us and closes it once we're through. The back alley we're in is uncomfortably cramped, and we have to shuffle through. Hold on. All at once, the thief turns, grasping my shoulders, and pushes me backwards until I'm pinned against the wall. What? We're both panting. The thief leans in until I'm nearly pressed body to body with them. Stay quiet. For 20 seconds. Helpless, I have to follow the thief's lead. I do everything in my power to breathe silently and try to tuck myself behind the stranger. After a count of 30, the thief gives me space. Who are you exactly? Mew. Okay, Mew. Do you trust me? I don't know you. But you haven't killed me yet. Why do I have to choose the stone? <laughs> I mean, you just kind of pulled me along out of nowhere. I'm gonna say yes, and he's gonna be like, that was your first mistake, and stab me on the spot. Huh? <laughs> I don't know. I guess. The word is out before I can think about it. Yes. The thief's mask turns towards me in a single abrupt motion. The fuck? <laughs> <laughs> You're right. You're right. Why would I? What other choice do I have? <laughs> Not trusting a stranger. He... I'm fairly confident that's a masculine voice. Sounds utterly caught. <laughs> what charm. Not in a good way. And what happens if I run off? You get arrested. So. Then trusting you is the right thing to do well, in this situation. By the lunar god scars, it's not. <laughs> Bro. <laughs> <laughs> He is definitely exasperated with me now, but I'm not about to stop needling this idiot. Are you suggesting I should go get myself arrested for what sounds to be your crime? No, you should definitely listen to what I'm saying, but you shouldn't just freaking trust me. <laughs> Very well. You're a criminal and a scoundrel. I don't trust you. Lead the way to our escape now. <laughs> <laughs> the irony is wonderful. <laughs> His sigh is long, suffering, <laughs> as though he was the one just abducted and led on a chase. So, the gal. Keep quiet until I tell you it's alright to speak again. Not yet. So, what's your name, thief? You got mine. I'm a thief. I suppose to take things. <laughs> That's all I do. I just I just uh, go around town and I just grab whatever I see. You know? um, that, that's the thief's way, you know? Do you want me to call you thief while we're walking around? Would you like that kind of attention? Ugh. You're not always going to be this mouthy, right? Depends on how much you deserve it. Fair enough. They call me Kier. 
pleased to meet you, Kier. Really? Not yet. And now you're going to shut up. Fine. I didn't say you could talk yet. <laughs> I've grown comfortable with the um, the anon anonymity, anon anonymity, anonymity of my mask. Anonymity. I can never say that. Anonymous. Anonymous. Anon but it's a good shame. I can't show here what exactly I think of his of his sass. To be fair, he's probably thinking the same thing. We sneak through the back alleys, shuffling fruit between buildings that seem to be leaning into each other. I have no idea where we are at this point. I have lost sight of all my usual landmarks, and there's every chance I'm in a cavern I've never explored before. Here, at least, looks to be completely comfortable navigating this space. We stop at the dead end. Or at least it looks like a dead end for a moment. Kier shoves aside a collection of heavy plates, and a short, narrow passage is revealed. Watch your step, huh? Alright. Oh, we're gonna get a new background, finally. We have to crouch and nearly crawl through the passage, but it's immersively short. Huh? Please. Oh, good. It's kind of dim, but I appreciate the, the sight. Huh? It leads into a small, open space behind several rough-built houses. At least I think they're houses. A lanky teen staring us down from the scrappy, stiffened fabric mats. Hey. We're stunstone polishers. Don't mind us. Okay. What was that? A code phrase? Still no talking. I roll my eyes behind the privacy of my mask. Then I take real stock of my surroundings. I'm in a strange place with a man I cannot trust, but said I did anyway. And I only know about one exit, the one behind me. Stay, leave, stay, leave. No, no, I'll stay, whatever. I can't try and flee now, risk the danger of a chase. And what if those authorities who are chasing us find me? Patience. Kier shoves his way shoves past the teen and well oh, it's a little aggressive isn't it and i follow close behind wherever we are i feel safer with him than alone we squeeze between two houses and i end up on a busy cramped road the glowworm light that illuminates all the caverns is mostly blocked out by the homes on either side of us then we're in a small square of sorts oh lovely and it's an open space with the most sturdy buildings in the area all around, and there's paths leading away in all directions. It's dark, but I can see glimpses of mask in the shutters that crack open to watch us. Kier, hey, I'm home. This is the first time I've heard any warmth in his voice. It's such an abrupt change. I almost cannot believe it's the same man behind the mask. A child jumps from the low second story window landing on Kier's back. Hey, give a man a warning. You're gonna break my back. No way. You menace. He reaches around and pulls the kid off him, holding them up by one arm. The kid is kicking and wiggling and laughing. You better say sorry, or you'll be stuck there forever. Haha, <laughs> sorry. Kier lets the kid down. Sorry, you're so old. And then she runs away. <laughs> The kid and a few of their friends pelt away and Kier protests loudly, but even I can hear him smiling. Kier, who's this? Someone plucks at my long sleeve, tugging my arm. I twist away sharply. That's Mew, or so they told me. Do I get to speak yet? Nah, I like the silence. Mm. Well, I think you've enjoyed enough of that. Could never get enough I am called Mew, though you can decide whether you believe me or not. What's a stranger doing here? Need it as a decoy. Turns out they're the right size. A decoy? Wow, you gotta be quick on your feet to keep up with Kier. Yeah, I was impressed. I thought I was gonna lose them for sure. No. Stop. Explain? 
Not everyone can keep up with me. You know that's not what I meant. What do you mean, a decoy? You know what a decoy is, right? I needed one. You fit the profile. He's evading. Why? You need a decoy to deceive some kind of authority. You need a decoy, and you're a thief. Um, yes, very smart. Continue. <laughs> Was I a decoy for someone you were working with, or someone you stole? Um, oh, damn. That's a quick one for sure. Ah,、uh, it sounds like I'm right. And what were you planning on doing with me when you were done?、Hmm? I was going to let you leave.、Uh, it's such a blatant lie. My jaw drops. Does he really think I'll believe that? No way. You can't just let him leave now. That they can find their way here. Oh, so I'm a prisoner now. Kier, what were you thinking? You absolute idiot.、Uh, I was thinking you'd play the bad guy, Griff, and let me be the hero. Looks like you're not one on today. <laughs> what? <laughs> I was thinking that someone can run and dodge the authorities as an asset. He faces me as he says that. What? <laughs> okay. What? <laughs> This whole conversation is just what? <laughs> He did not just try to recruit me. Kier, you're insane. You cannot say that all. Only you can say that all you like. I'm right. Yeah, he is insane. You're right. You need them to stay quiet. I wasn't planning on involving the authorities.、So. And why should I trust you when you say that? You might be as naive enough to trust a stranger, but I know better. You're the one who asked me. So we'll let them learn even more about us. That's about the shape of things. Once you're involved, you're the same type of criminal as the rest of us. And if I'm involved against my will,、mm, yeah, the enforcement here is just so kind and understanding. I'm sure they'll take you at your word. More people, plain masked and curious, are gathering around. I don't know why you're being so hostile to me when I didn't ask for any of this. Because you don't understand. If we get caught stealing, we get killed. The one thing, th wait, I can steal the lunar echo, can't I? This is the stealing path.、Huh? This is the best path. Probably a hostile one. The only way we can even start to trust you is if you also got a noose around your neck. And I didn't ask for any of this. Doesn't matter, you. Let it go, let it go. I don't want to read a long rant. I'm about to lose a torrent of insults, but I check myself. I am Kier's territory, not my own. If he decides I'm not worth the trouble of dealing with, he and his gang could easily end me. Huh? Nothing more to say. No, I, I'm all good. <laughs> I turn my face away sharply. He may not be able to see my expression, but I'm certain my body language radiates anger. Well, finally figured out how to shut up. I have a swallowed down bitter bile and blue fiery fury. There's a quiet moment. Everyone around us seems to be coming to do the same conclusion as me. I am cornered. I don't have a choice in this. I keep my voice as flat and neutral as possible as I conform to the situation and try to survive. Not really, though.、No. Then, what do I do? You run a few jobs with us, get the at news good and tight, and then, if you want to leave, you get yourself a new identity and you leave. You already put on a mask and pick the name once, right, Mia? Right. Then you can do it again.、Uh, you sure about this, though? Yeah. With gups down for the count,、uh, we need a new lookout.、Uh, Mew's got what it takes. I sure hope you don't think that counts as a compliment.、Uh, when I compliment you, if that ever happens, you'll know. Good to know. 
And we're not even we're not using Eve because because Eve is twelve. Don't be stupid, Griff. Fine. I'll do what you need, and then I'm out. Hey! No need to make it sound like a prison sentence. Am I not being held here against my will? Prisoners don't get paid. You will. Oh, so I'm gonna work as a thief. Making money for the Lunar Ichor. And stealing money, too? What? We're pra pragmatic. We're not monsters. You you do the work you get paid. Can we really afford? Yes, Griff. I, I heard we're getting our favorite visitor in a few weeks. We'll all be getting paid. Hell, yes. What do you mean, paid? Caught your attention, have I? I think it's fair to know what my wages are going to be. Yeah. The number Kier gives is not a gobsmackingly high. Yeah. But it's not low either. A few jobs could make for some comfortable living at the Leaping Bear for a long time. Then again, it won't solve my big problem. Good enough? I have a counter offer. The idea in my head is half formed, but I have to pursue it. Oh, are we negotiating? You're a thief. Yes, that, that is well if, that, yeah, we get it. Which means, if I want something instead of money, you could get it. Depends on the thing. I don't know, this thing is so rare, I highly doubt. Lunar Echo. The crowd around us bursts into a flurry of whispers. Well, at least they know it's important. Kira's voice changes suddenly, a timbre low, in a way I can't interpret. Listen, if they steal that for you, they're going to keep it for themselves and sell it. They're not going to give it to you. <laughs> I don't think so. You need Ikor? I do. For what? Why should I trust you enough to say? Well, you already did trust them at the beginning when I said yes. Rude blackmailer. There's a long pause. That's a lot of jobs you're going to have to work to earn something that pricey. Would I be able to make enough money to buy it? Not in your life, I don't think. Not with us, at least. Then working for you is my best shot at getting it. Griff suddenly pulls on Kira's cloak, and he leans in. There's whispering, and I am not nearly close enough to hear it. Then they separate, and Kira runs his hand over his mask. It's a gesture of pure exhaustion. Fine. The whispers rise in intensity. You work with us, you get your ink. How? You don't even know where it is, do you? He holds out a gloved hand. We have a deal? I slowly reach out. He clasps my hand and we shake on it. Deal. I'm tempted for a second to think this it was too easy. Uh, but... It really wasn't. Kira calls out to the crowd. Someone go out at, with them and get their things. Pardon? We can't have you sneaking in and out all the time. Too much dangerous. We just finished moving here as well. So I live here now? You'll get a room of your own. Eventually, a volunteer comes for. Well, why can't I join this? <laughs> I'm gonna get a room? Everything? Sounds great. <laughs> All I have to do is look out. I'm, I'm, I'm basically set. Together we sneak out of the hidden community and return to the Leaping Bear. They refuse to talk to me and just follow me like a shadow into my room while I gather the few things I left there. Some clothes, the odd knickknacks I managed to acquire, my hygiene supplies. And then it's time to return the key. Yeah. Hello. Oh, um, Mew, good to see you. Ready to pay for more time? You're definitely the reliable sort, so I can offer a good rate. Um, not this time, sorry. I found somewhere else, a little closer to my golds. I dropped the key on the counter in front of her. Thank you, though. The Leaping Bear was becoming a bit of a new home for me. She's quiet for a few seconds. Then she drops her voice low, so low I could barely hear her. Do you need help? If that shadow of yours is unwelcomed, Rufus can remove them. What? Um, oh. 
Oh no. Things are fine. Rufus doesn't need to do anything. I'm fine. My new arrangements came as a surprise, but I did say yes to the offer. Never mind what kind of dirt arrests they put me under. I did agree. Good then. Never liked seeing my clientele go places they weren't interested in, in going. Uh, thank you for staying with us. The propitious voice is a little more formal than I'm used to. I suppose now that I'm leaving, I will likely never see her again. It's a little disappointing I have no real bonds here in the marketplace. But I was getting used to the, to the leaping bear. Goodbye. Goodbye, bear's face, people. I leave my shadow clothes. I leave my shadow clothes behind me. Eventually, they take the lead, guiding me to get another hidden passage. How many ways of sneaking in and out are there? Well, this is probably like a thief's guild or something. There has to be multiple ways. Um, as we enter the cavern again, someone is there waiting for us. Hey. My shadow answers quickly. Don't mind us, just here to polish some stun stones. <laughs> then I'm being led back into the tight network of pathways being closely built homes. Between closely built homes until we're stopped in the square again. Care, I'm done being a babysitter. I see Care, or at least it's Matt's, turn to face us. Already? You don't have to sound so annoyed. I didn't have many earthly possessions to start with. Getting them was easy. Good. We found a room for you too. You'll be staying with me. I'm sorry, what? <laughs> Kier brings home a stray. He gets to take care of it. A stray? Griff. Mew is a person. Username. The way he says it, it sounds like this was a frequent topic of discussion. My home is small, but I have a lot of guests, so I keep a spare room. Then I suppose I should thank you for your hospitality? It would be nice. Maybe later. <laughs> Kier suddenly stands next to me and pats my back, right between my shoulders. Let's get going. I had a long ass day and I need to take a break. Are you even going to be able to relax with a stranger in your home? No, but it's nice to pretend. We start walking. By the way, welcome to Mousehole. What a name for this place. The twisting paths between the buildings are tangled mess, and there is no easy landmark to orinate myself with. Further from the square, the homes and businesses such as they are, are packed so tightly together that the blue-green glowworm light from above doesn't reach us. Instead, the warm flickering lights of lamps and lanterns fill the pathway. It's dim, but at this point it's hardly a problem. My eyes are certainly used to the constant glow of the marketplace, so here we are. It's one home sandwiched tightly between two others, near indistingu nearly indistinguishable from the rest. The one, the only identifiable thing I notice are the close shutters, some painted blue instead of a simply sealed raw wood. Kier unlocks the door and opens it up for me. Come inside. I step in, as small and cramped as anyone would have guessed. But when Kier lights the lantern in by the front door, I can see... That is, un un it, that is comfortably arranged space. None of, none of the furniture matches, but all the works are some odd kind of cluttered harmony. I'll compliment his home. You have a uh, nice home? That was nearly a compliment, I suppose. I'll take it. That's all I can give right now. At least I can say that I tried. There's a water closet behind the door. If you use the water up, you'll have to get more. I can show you where after I get some sleep. Um, your room is there. The key is in the lock. That's the only key. Don't lose it. Understood. If you buy and keep your own food, that's fine. 
Otherwise, you contribute to my budget, and we share what I get. Any other rules I ought to know? Don't be destructive. Don't make a racket while I'm sleeping. And if I leave, go around the neighborhood as much as you like. If you try to leave without an escort, expect the watch to notice and stop you. I'm going to have something to eat before bed. You hungry? I'm glad he can't see the surprise on my face. Are you sure? About letting you have a snack? About keeping me here? Oh. Here's the thing, Mew. I'm not that worried about you murdering me in my sleep, but my door locks are the same as yours, and honestly, eternal rest isn't exactly something I'm dreading. He chuckles a bit. If you decide to make yourself into a problem, we can find somewhere else to put you. Griff knows a pretty obscure tunnel that goes straight down if you're really unbearable. If it's all the same, I would like to avoid that. It's easy enough to think of this as just another guest house. That Kier is no worse than Rufus. Intimidating, but ultimately harmless. He steps towards what I assume um, to be a cooking space. The counter is exceptionally cluttered, but he is able to find the goal with ease. A shallow wooden bowl. Here. He takes a handful of whatever or is from the bowl, and then holds it out to me. This is... Deadly poison. Eat up. A closer look tells me it's actually an assortment of dried fruits. Sure, why not? No harm in getting a snack. I take a few and Kier puts the bowl away again. He doesn't reveal his mouth as he nibbles, instead threading the, the fruit under his mask. I'm doing the same. Well, you get yourself some rest. Don't murder me in my sleep. I'll resist the temptation as best as I can. Kira desperately, suddenly, taking himself and his handful of dried fruits into the bedroom. I hear the lock click dis decisively, and I'm suddenly alone again. Free to indulge my curiosity privately, I do a quick tour of his front room. Kira certainly made an effort to make a livable space, but that seems to be as far as his efforts had gone. Not much for entertainment here, is there? Maybe he doesn't have friends over much. Well, he just said he had a lot of guests, so I don't know about that. I continue nibbling. The sticky, sweet, tart taste coats the back of my tongue. My search is quick in the end. It has to be you know, with a, uh, so little to look at. He has books. I see the bookshelf back there. Can you look at those? I slip into the dark guest room as though I am an intruder. For a moment, I feel like I am. It has the same cozy but square feel to the main room. Not the space I could call my own. Door locked, I give myself permission to relax. Kier could have very well had a second key to his room, or chose to break or bypass the lock in some way, but there is little use worrying about it. I'm already so keyed up from the stress that adding the possibility of being murdered in my sleep would make resting impossible. What have I gotten myself into? <laughs> I always wonder that. <laughs> I've been recruited into a gang of thieves against my will. A gang that likely stills to survive. But there's one thing that leaves me deeply uncomfortable. If I was a decoy for something Kier stole, that means Kier was stealing a person. Uh, could I live with myself helping to steal people? There must be a good reason. There is no good reason. Um. Hmm. Now I have to really think about that word. I feel like there could be. It depends on the situation. It's all situational, isn't it? But ultimately, I don't think there's a good reason for it. <laughs> the cold fingers of reality close around my heart. There is no good reason I can imagine that justifies stealing people. Well, stealing for survival, I can understand. But not that far. I swallow hard, trying to chase these thoughts away. I am not going to sleep at all, am I? I follow the motions of getting ready for bed. I even take my mask. Oh yeah, I take it off. Though I am careful to lie down with my back to the door. 
And after some hours of trying to find a comfortable... Hours? Wow. He is really stressed out. I must have fallen asleep. Because Kira wakes me up with sharp knocks to the door. In the days that followed, I get used to the pace of the life at the mouse hold. I am, as promised, left to my own devices for the most part. I can sense people getting tense when I drift towards any of the myriad uh, exits. But I'm not about to test my luck with the ill-considered escape attempt. Kira, it seems, is a popular one. He constantly... He's constantly being called this way or that, uh, attending to roof repairs or settling quarrels, uh, but that is only when I see him, which is quite rare. We are, quite often, ships that pass in the night. In my first days, I was largely ignored. None of the regular residents wanted to interact with me. I have to admit, it nearly drove me mad. But once I proved to their satisfaction that I am not a deranged maniac, the people seemed keen about uh, getting their addition. No set of hands in their work. Okay. I've chopped vegetables and hauled water and watched babies and held a lot of ladders in place. It's not hard work, but it conquers my boredom and gives me a chance to make small talk. Mew! I need a hand. On it. Shall. Well, one of the friendliest people in the mouse house, uh, hole, um, is stacking crates near an exit passage. Not sure how much I can help, but I don't think my reach is longer than yours. I just need a little more support, so I can, uh, yep. They do a short hop and shove the crate into place, so. If you've got time, I could use a hand a little longer. My schedule is packed, uh, but I can skip a social engagement or two to help. Wow, yeah, you really settled in, didn't you? Shao's chuckle was gratifying. Very funny. But aren't you going to, uh, to the strategy meeting soon? Strategy meeting? You're running lookout, aren't you? I believe that was the arrangement, but this is the first I'm hearing about a... Hey Mew, we gotta talk about strats. Speak of the devil. Looks like I'm doing this on my own. I wouldn't want you to skip that social engagement. Thank you, Xiao. Maybe there will be some barrels we can roll around later to make up for this. I think there's an empty one around here somewhere. The kids took it, it to roll each other... Wait, to roll each other in? To Are, are they rolling each other over? <laughs> that I would love to see. Are you ignoring me, Mew? Not the slightest. You know how much I love talking with you. Bye, Shell. Bye. I make my way towards Kier. I'm a little more comfortable following him through the narrow, winding paths of the mouse house. Hole now. Oh man, there are so many... God, imagine how long this game would take if you played all the paths. What were you doing there? Trying to give Shell a hand? Makes sense. Shell's always finding good tasks to get the kids involved in community work. You're probably right, but uh, I resent that remark. Anyway, get moving. Everyone's waiting for you. You say eh, that like I deliberately dallied. Uh, this is the first I'm hearing about a meeting. Uh, then we'll need to fix your communication, too. Hey, waiting for someone... For Wait, hey. Waiting for me to ask, when are you holding a secret meeting I do not even know oh, is a possibility is not reasonable. Yeah, yeah, get moving. And we duck into one of the buildings on the square. Kira's duck particularly low. The door frame is unusually short and something I did not read. Hey, Kira. Finally found them. I wasn't hiding. Found them just fine. Thanks. I wasn't Hiding? Well, I never said you- they never said you were hiding. I, I take a seat at the table with several other individuals. The room is extremely dark, even for an underground room. But I think I can see hints of this being a pub or a bar of some kind. Real quick to me. These are Laves and Halo. And you already know Griff. Um, terrible seeing you again, Neil. Likewise. 
One of the other two gives me a slow, casual wave. Laver Lavernia? Call me Lave. My girl here is Halo. The other one, Halo, gives me a near in perceptible nod. Imperceptible. She's leaned in coat close to Lave. Not the talkative sort of couple, then. Okay, Griff. What's the brief? We got a commission. Fuck off. Kier's already approved it. Don't worry. It's fine, Lave. Griff gave me the full rundown of the client. We've got a commission to relieve the auctioner of a few choice pieces. Absolutely fucking not. Not the auction. I'm not crazy. The auctioner. Um, this, that means crossing the ruby walls. The what? You've done that half a dozen times. And nearly died each time. We're not dead yet. Not you too, Kier. You're, n you're supposed to be the sensible one. I am being sensible. This is a huge potential payoff. And we have an end. I don't feel the need to interrupt this. So I don't fully understand, but I'm not about to interrupt this discussion without good reason. Fine. We'll do the extremely dangerous job behind the ruby walls. That's the spirit. So we cross the walls. Easy. And we all know where the auctioner's houses are in... Our inn is the new building being done by the club next door. It's an easy climb from there to the balcony, which doesn't have a lock. You and Halo are going to find and lift the pieces we're after. Kier and me are going to be defense and distraction. And Mew will try to live up to Gup's example. Not a terrible plan. Not a good plan either. Halo's voice is so ghostly, I'm not entirely sure I heard it. Obviously, it sounds dumb without important details. Griff draws a map on the tabletop with a stick of chalk and carefully walks us through each step. For the most part, I understand. My role is, if nothing else, comically easy. Uh, stand by. Signal if there are people around. Okay. You with us, ma'am? I mean, it's not like I have a choice, so... I don't have- Yeah, exactly. I don't have a choice in that, do I? <laughs> He's asking if you understand. I almost everything. Almost? I've gleaned that the auctioneer's house is on the level above a pleasure parlor. Something you did not expect. But I don't know what the ruby walls are. Did we pass those? I'm pretty sure I read something about ruby walls. How do you not know that? I've been under the mountain less than a month, and you're locals. That's how. Fine. The ruby walls are a series of walls that have a vein of raw red rubies in them and a, mar a main market cavern. There are gates that theoretically anyone can go through. But in practice, it's a space for the rich and beautiful. Exactly. And it's heavily guarded beyond the walls, hence the danger. Yep. Now I understand. And in the future, you'll speak up immediately if there's something you don't know. Oh. You're always telling me that to talk. Not to talk. And now this. I'm serious. I'm not risking my own neck to save you. If you're in a stupid situation, you get in trouble, you're on your own. So I'm not an acceptable loss? So exactly. Let's go get ready. The four of them stand up. I follow their lead. My cloak is just barely fine enough to be worn beyond the ruby walls. But the other four take the chance to fancy themselves up. God, back in these awful things. Kier holds up a heavy, richly embroidered cloak. Imagining him in it is comical. <laughs> <laughs> Laughing at me, Neil? Yes. <laughs> and you too, Lave? She shrugs. They're right. You look stupid in that. It doesn't match. It really doesn't. <laughs> oh, they're savage against them. I keep telling you, buddy. You're made of iron, not silver. 
Griff's already in his disguise. Like you're one to talk. You look like a child going in Daddy's closet. Griff's short stature and casual posture leaning into Kier is completely at odds with his jeweled hood and satin cap. Huh? Cape. Cape. Knowing what he is like honestly makes it funnier. You look like you robbed Saint Santine with a lantern. Without a lantern. Satine? What's Satine? Ha 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 You look like a fro pillow fucked. <laughs> what is this? Oh my god! <laughs> Lay burst in the laughter. I yeah, I'm getting an in. This is my social obligations calling. Mostly at Halo's response, I assume. Mew. <laughs> oh no. Kier reaches over and takes hold of my shoulder, and holds tight as he curls into himself, choking on laughter. Laugh it up. After a second, Griff's looks at me. It wasn't that funny. You're just surprised them with vulgarity. <laughs> Kira pops up in a, a smile in his voice. No, it was a bit funny. You really put it over the top, Halo. Oh no, I... Thanks, Halo. The laughter dies away a little. Though the mood has definitely been lifted. Things settle down again. I don't know why I put up with you. Kier pats his shoulder firmly. I, I really am getting into all the dynamics of this. I'm glad that they wrote this. I don't know why. It like it feels... I don't know. Chemically imbalanced. Um, neither do I. Um, there's uh, some more scattered laughs, but the atmosphere of the room slowly turns more serious. So... Uh. Halo and Abe are checking each other's disguises, ensuring their weapons are not visible to passers-by. Kier is checking over his own knife carefully. It's beautiful and likely quite old, unlike the rest of his daily wear. Should I be armed? It's not a good idea, obviously. I am a rank novice, so, and would be far more likely to be stabbed with my own knife than use it to properly defend myself. Still, I cannot help but feel a twinge of fear. A knife won't make me less uh, feel less frightened. But it's hard to convince myself of that fact. The rest of the preparations happen in anticipatory silence. Ready? Then let's move. We walk in a loose group to get another exit. I have yet a fully... I have yet to fully count the ways in, uh, into and out of Mouse Hole, but there are, has to be at least a dozen. And another narrow passage that leads into the back room of a shop. From there, we can ex exit through the stone front and step into the busy walkways of the marketplace. Uh, we're getting some um, background stuff, finally. Look alive. In any other circumstance, we would be a, a deeply strange group. A gang of well-dressed strangers walking together, but not talking. But this is hardly the strangest sight in the marketplace. There's a bird mask contortionist performing in a tiny cage and a pair of drunkards fighting in just one of the crossroads we were walking through. Things are as lively as ever. We passed the church on our way into the most central caverns. Was it only a few days ago I was standing there, looking for some clue to start me on my hunt? As we entered the larger cabin, so, uh, the heart of the marketplace where I started my journey, we walked close together. Alright, you know the drill. Split up and we'll meet across the pearl chucker. Mew, you're with me. Oh good, the only thing that is in the shadow. Lave and Halo are gone for a second, melted into the crowd. Griff glances back at Kier for a second before doing the same. Don't trust me not to run off? Not in the slightest. Plus you're new to this. I might be able to give you some pointers. How do you know I'm new to this? 
you're paying a lot of attention to small details, the kind that are easy to ignore when you're used to this work. Fair enough. I never planned an FF before. I've never worked in an organized group to still before. Oh. Um. Oh, so do I get the choice to be a a thief or like a, a singular thief? Um, or I just never stolen before in my life. I'm a goody two shoes. So, uh, I'll go with this one. Believe it or not, my surface life uh, has uh, very little thievery in it. So, you know, I think I can believe it. But I said it before, you're quick. As long as you're not about to get it high and mighty about stealing, you'll do fine. Depending. Uh, what's the auction you're like? She's someone who would sell literally anything if it means getting a cut. Huh? And what will we do with our funds? Sell it to a different asshole who'll do anything for a cut. I think you'll like him, though. He, he's got a tongue as quick as yours. So. Is that all you think I am? Maybe if you talk less, I'll understand you more. How does that work? How does that work? Not a chance. It's worth a try. And here, at the walls... Take them in. My first impression is that they're nothing special. Stone walls about twice as tall as the average person. Smooth enough to be nearly impossible to climb barehanded. And then I notice the flickering lights. The rubies and the stone have been dug around, and the polish where they sit so... Oh, they catch the light. They glimmer like candles, but the color is richer and redder than any fire. There are hundreds, possibly thousands of them. It's subtle and beautiful. And here's the gates. Brace yourself. Kier seems to set his shoulders and marches forward, leaving me to hurry and catch up. Beyond the ruby walls, things are still busy, but it's, it's not as though there's anything to muffle the sounds of the rest of the marketplace. So. But there is still a noticeable change. The rest of the marketplace has people hawking their wares, shouting at potential buyers and cajoling them to buy. Yeah. Here, the people standing in front of the businesses don't shout. They offer samples or display their wares, pose at and flirt with passerbys. There is no shouting. I suppose if you have a business here, you don't need to shout to get attention. It really is different. There's nothing in the world like the jewel box. It might have been said in admiration, except Kier's voice was oozing bitter disdain. Kier and I walk side by side. Either taking a few turns to avoid direct paths to Pearl, Pearl Choker. He stops to look at perfume bottles and little ivory statuettes. I pause near a window blazing with light, a lantern shop. You know the plan. I know the plan. You know oh, where to hide. I know where to hide if you foul up everything. But you won't, will you? From your lips to the moon, no. What does that mean? No. Don't make me run again. Or what? Or I'll be very cross. So. Be still my beating on Anything but that. So. Um. Wish of luck. You'll stay safe, won't you? I have no plan unless I'm dying. What about not dreading eternal rest? So. I'm not afraid of dying. I still don't want to. With my luck, I'd get it done in, and then it hurt like a bitch. Then you'll stay stay. Kier stops and turns to me. We're stones in the river of people around us who pay us no mind. Kier reaches out and then gives me one, two soft pats on the top of my head. I'll stay safe. You have seen the half of what I can do. His voice is warm and confident. Is this a love story? Am I gonna fall in love with this character? I mean, it is 18 plus. So. Oh boy. At the Pearl Choker, Kier spit lits away from uh, me to enter through the front door. I slip between the pleasure parlor and the uh, neighboring gambling hall. Uh, both mi businesses are high class, with beautiful fronts and charming staff, I swear. 
I could hear a live band from one of them. But it doesn't matter how pretty the buildings are. All alleyways are the same. There's a vague sense of grime and hostility. I'm definitely not breaking any rules, but I'm also certainly not welcome here. If things have gone to plan, Lave and Halo broke into the apartment above the Pearl Choker by climbing the new attachment to, to the gambling house and jumping the gap. Griff and Kier are going up through the inside using a staff passage, and I am keeping watch, signaling whether the alleyway is clear or not for a simple set of gestures. Holding one arm, there are people in the alley. Holding both, there are guards or staff in the alley. Arms relaxed. No one here but me. It is not complicated. But I do have to keep an eye on both ends of the alleyway, signaling consistently. Ideally, ideally all four of them will jump the gap and climb down the gambling hall's addiction. Addition, and we'll s and we'll separate to reunite in mouse hole. If we need to run, I even have the turns I'll need to take in the crossroads memorized. Straight through the first crossroad, left, then left again, right, and if I uh, won't be seen, I go into and hide into the butcher shop. Huh. It's written on my arm. It's burned in my memory. Oh, uh, this is this is gonna be a game. Oh boy. So it's both arms if there's guards or anything, and there's one arm if there's people. And yeah, I'm gonna do no hints. At least I have a plan. Though. I also have a plan. I could run away. I might as well get to work because this is where I think I want my story to go. I leaned against the gambling hall wall. This one is made of stone, beautifully cut and polished and scratched with all sorts of graffiti. People never change. Always arguing that someone had been here, here, that Agatha has great tits, that Darwin fucked his mates. Delightful, huh? Wonderful. The, yeah, this is graffiti, I see, sure. Um, I'm alone in the alley. I drop my arms and wait. So my stomach churns with this comfort. I feel cool. Neutrality. My body buzzes. I, I want to feel neutral. Thank you. I don't enjoy this life, but I'm not upset to be here. Would I choose to be here on my own accord? Probably not. But to get Lunar Acre, I'd do anything. At least this is something I can tolerate. But for the moment, I have to put these feelings away. For a short while longer, I am completely alone. Then a stranger wobbles along into an alleyway towards me. Hey, hey, mind if I get a smoke? Not at all. Want any? She holds out a little pouch of herbs I recognize it. on sight. Sweet grass. Um, if I've had it plenty of times before back at the surface. You smoke it with others to build bonds. As loose herbs like this, it softens the hard edges of stress. So, not enough to addle the mind in any way. Just enough to make connection easier. Well, I hold one arm. I let my arm rest against my torso and grip my elbow firmly. Sweet grass, right? You know it? Every teen learn learns to grow it where I'm from. Lucky you. I only found the stuff down here. I I will accept. What if it? What if she gives me something? What if I form a bond with somebody important? Uh, it's not laced, is it? Couldn't afford it if it was. I'll have a little bit. Thanks. I'm on a job, but you know, uh, <laughs> the stranger gives me a slip of paper and pinches of sweet grass, and we roll our tabs. So. I know the camaraderie of sharing something as simple as a little pinch of pleasure for no other reason than the joy of sharing. I don't trust the stranger, but I do trust the traditions we're engaging in. I remove the lower portion of my mess, letting it sit in my pocket. With a quick strike of a bet, sharp tabs are lit and we set the smoking. I hold my elbow in one hand and my tab in the other, 
The sharp, jagged edges of my thoughts soften as I breathe in the smoke. I keep turning my gaze to either end of the alley, still focused on my mission, of course. What are you here for? Oh. I'm not gonna just tell you I'm gonna look out for a whole thief operation. Just personal business. And you? Heard there was a fortune one in the gambling ha halls here every hour. Thought I'd try my luck. And how has your luck fared? I'm about to get a big win. I can feel it. Not well then. Maybe the lunar god smiled upon you. Oh, you're a loony. <laughs> There's a few people milling near the a alleyway entrance. I can't tell what sort of people they are. Uh, most people here are. Well, most people here are. A lunar blessing felt appropriate. So, it's so strange, though. The solar god makes everything perfect. The lunar god ruins everything. And then people here worship the moon. Uh, I was never one for theology myself. Oh, uh, whatever. One of the people at the end of the alleyway starts coming in. Big, confident posture. But first, I can't tell if they're armed. Then I see a blade. Well, holy heck, they are armed. Um... Hold both arms, I think. I flick away my tab and cover my mouth again. I need my edges sharp if this person reads trouble. They get closer. Hello? Any reason you're loitering back here? Oh, I didn't realize we were loitering. We were just having a break. Yeah, we were just sharing some sweet grass. Want any? She rummages through her bag, but the stranger cuts her off. No. They point at me. I didn't see you in the hall earlier. I wasn't in the gavel in the hall alone. Then where have you been? No. Bro, why are you so interested? So, here. I I've just been here. Proof? Oh, somebody stole something. Oh. Oh, something happened. They're investigating, aren't they? Uh, well, I have been here with them for a while now. Sweet grass won't smoke itself. Um, she points at my discarded tab. She's... Still letting off a thin stream of fragrant smoke among the trash. Oh, smoking with this person might have just saved my ass. <laughs> Mind if I ask a few questions? Go ahead. Definitely some kind of security force. Did you come here alone? Come where? The Sally? To the jewel box. So I, I, I came alone. Yeah, I'm a newcomer to the marketplace. I wanted to see if uh, some of the sites people uh, keep talking about. Yeah, you know. That's what I'm doing. N nothing unusual here. <laughs> the alley is nothing special, but the rest of the jewel box is very nice. So their posture betrays nothing. Then I see my friend here with sweet grass, and she offered to share some. I wanted to take a break, so why not? That's what happened? Yeah, put that out and go back in. I'm not done yet, so I'm talking to this one alone. No. It doesn't sound like they're, they're, uh, they're going to brook any argument. You have a win waiting for you, right? Yeah, yeah, good talking with you. Likewise. She leaves, and I'm left alone with this member of a security force, so... Um, I'm gonna remain holding both arms. Is there a problem, then? Suspicious activity. Not good. Do people not stand around alleyways at the jewel box? Not unless they're looking for trouble. Well, I have seemed to have found some. I'm just looking for some quiet, so... Yeah, I'm not gonna- I'm not gonna, um, talk back to the guy with the blade, okay? Let's just not do that. So, I was just looking, uh, you know, I was just looking for a little bit of quiet, and yeah, just doing nothing. <laughs> with another person? Better one than hundreds, I would say. The stranger's posture somehow gets more tense. Like, they're waiting for me to book it. Why are you here? I'm in the jewel box, or in general? The marketplace. Bye. And you had time to wander around? Turns out not everything is for sale all of, of the time. I'm waiting for a shipment to come in. Oh no, we're adding more to the story. This is not good. That should be enough. Truth to convince them. And what have you been doing while you wait? Okay, okay. He believes that, somehow. 
seeing everything the marketplace has to offer, minding my own business. Um, I guess I'll look. I was looking, you know, just I just a browser. <laughs> Oh, I've, you know, I've been everywhere, even if I'm not buying. It's incredible to see everything there is to offer. The staff at the Leaping Bear have been very good at advising me where to go. Well, no answer. But that's better than a bad one. Open up your cloak. What? <laughs> I need to check you for any dangerous objects. This is a bit strange, isn't it? Not? Good thing I didn't take the knife. I open my cloak and put it with the security offers uh put it up with the security officer examining with almost intimate closest closeness by lantern light it's uncomfortable but there's only so much i can do i did consent to this technically as you can see i'm just an ordinary traveler don't say anything i agree that you are not carrying any weapons you're free to go sorry you can leave now. My first instinct was to tell them that I wanted to stay here, and that's not going to go over well. I'm waiting for someone here. Oh no. Then wait in the tea parlor across the road. Clear out. I'd rather not. They stare at me. I suppose they're trying to parse exactly what I'm thinking. You've been cooperative, so I'm going to extend the same courtesy to you. Once. Get out of here now, before I have to take you in for suspicious behavior. I freeze. I can't leave, but staying is also no longer an option. I'm almost grateful that this is the moment someone chooses to leap from the balcony above and land on the addition to the gambling house. It's Kier, he lands, and before the security officer can say a word, a knife flies past my head and stops the... It, it, in the officer's comments. Oh. Ha ha. Ha <laughs> ha You can't make me do anything now. Well, they fall. Gasping. We're compromised. Run! I don't even stop to think. I just move. No one's raised an alarm yet as I sprint from the alley. But me sprinting away from the gambling art at full tilt, it inherently is something. I reach my first crossroad within seconds. Uh, uh, run straight through. I sprint straight through the crossroads, plowing through a cluster of people listening to a musician on the corner. I could swear my pursuers are getting closer. Another crossroad. I turn, turn, run straight through. It only takes a split second for me to realize I've made a mistake. Turning back is impossible. I'll just fall into the arms of the security offers. I take more blind turns, hoping to find something familiar, but the marketplace is a labyrinth. I find myself trapped in the dead end. Several security office officers grab me. Get off! No one is coming to save me. Help! Oh god. I, I should have turned, I guess. Anyone. The security offers are efficient, if nothing else. For a second, I don't feel anything at all. I hear some splatter on the stone below me. There's a feeling of ice in my belly, followed by a red-hot agony. Above all, for a second I feel overwhelmingly nauseous. I vomit my guts out. If they hadn't already been spilled out on the ground, I died. I'm hearing. My hearing goes distant and fuzzy. I can't and recognize the sound as I'm screaming. Everything gets distant and hazy. I in pain, and it blurs my vision and muffles my hearing, and deadens all other sensation. Uh, and then they leave me alone to die. Whoa! I got my end. It's been an hour and 30 minutes, and I already ended the game, and I thought this would be a two hour video. Yeah, I'm not gonna go back. This is a long game. Ugh. Um. I feel like. I, I, uh. I guess I could have made a turn. It would have been more appropriate. I'm not surprised I died, though. I'm surprised I made it this far, to be honest. Uh, I wonder if there was any other er, ways to die before I even got there. Ugh. Or if I just, like. I just 
I wonder what it, what would have happened if I went into the church instead, too. Well, that's something I maybe want to see on my own time. However, that's the end of this game for me. It's been a while since I did a longer one. And my voice is quite exhausted, so... so I hope you guys enjoyed that video. I'm probably not gonna edit it as much, just to warn you. Oh wait, I should've put that at the beginning, but you know, it's at the end now. So... Whatever. Um, hope you guys enjoyed Obscurio. Sorry I couldn't get a good ending. Maybe, maybe I'll do that, something like that later. I probably should've saved. I did not. <laughs> anyway, that's it. Have a great day, slash night, whatever, and uh, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.